America, so this is popular online right now, but uh, I believe that uh, Tim Cook doesn't do as good of a job as Steve Jobs did running Apple. Okay, that's a f I didn't know that's a thing that's online. Steve Cook. Tim oh, yes. Cook. Tim Cook. Oh, the Apple dude. And uh, record. So recording on both sides. Uh, normally what I do is someone would come by and I'd give them the whole spiel of what I was doing. They want to know ahead of time. Okay. I'll be like, um, my whole thing is I believe that any two people can have a conversation with each other, regardless of the background, beliefs, whatever they think about, whatever they look. If you want to try it? It's like a five minute chat. Sure. Got a five minute timer here. Okay. Cool. That's and good. would you be cool if I recorded it? Absolutely. Cool. I'm Ty. Nice to meet you. I'm Paul. Paul? Paul? So really, uh, is there anything that you want to talk about for five minutes? Anything that you think is true, that really motivates you? Well, okay, so this is popular online right now, but uh, I believe that uh, Tim Cook doesn't do as good of a job as Steve Jobs did running Apple. Okay, that's a f I didn't know that's a thing that's online. Steve Cook? Tim oh, yes. Cook. It's Tim Cook. Steve oh, the Jones. Apple dudes. Yes. Tim Cook. So is Tim Cook like the leader right now? He is. Okay, and then Steve Jobs. And then, would you say this is a really important thing in your life? Like you dedicate your life around this? i uh, not dedicated my life around it, but it is something that has been a um, you know, predominant theme in my life. I'm in IT, I've worked at the Apple Store, I'm an Apple stockholder. Okay! I've had many of the uh, products over the years. And so I've kept up with um, the, the releases. I've watched the annual keynote every year for probably the last decade. Okay, uh, how about this then? Let me do this. I think this actually works. All right, so uh, it's a fun topic. Let's see what we can knock out here. So, why do you, how confident do you think that Steve Jobs is actually better than Team Cook? Uh, I'm very confident. Would you say like on a scale from like zero to 100%? Zero, no doubt, like I'm all doubt, 100%, no doubt whatsoever. If you look at this the- This is totally the fact. If you look at the quality of the products, I would say I'm uh, probably upper 90s. Okay, okay. What's the criteria that you're basing it on? Uh, I'm basing it on the fact that um, previously uh, their product lineup uh, was repairable. Okay. It uh, had a, a degree of longevity to it. And while uh, from a cost benefit ratio it was more expensive to spec something out uh, that was an Apple product, it generally um, paid that forward in both uh, user experience and uh, the life of the product. And under Tim Cook's leadership, we've seen an uh, increased number of uh, quality programs where okay. uh, there's been defects in manufacturing that later have been revealed in uh, litigation uh, through uh, exposing Apple's own internal testing practices and them greenlighting it anyway. Mm. Uh, they have um, started a, a what they call a TikTok uh, product release cycle, and so they'll do they try to do like a, a major feature release, and then they try to kind of clean it up the following year and so you get uh the five the five s the six the six s and so it, it seems like every time they make a, a, a bold design choice yeah the following year they fix the problem that they could have fixed if they had not had um, uh, some sort of stockholder meeting they had to appease okay and, uh tim cook's bonuses very objectively when he got hired on were not based upon design and Apple culture. Okay. They were based upon annual performance. And so you also see that uh, surface in the metrics where every keynote, he says, we have more people adopting iOS than ever before. We okay. have more people um, buying the product at launch than ever before. Uh, but not surprisingly, they've also adopted more aggressive means of forcing adaptation by uh, aggressive uh, notifications on people's devices by releasing the product in more countries mm -hmm. every year by taking control of supply chain mm -hmm. uh, so that they don't run into these manufacturing hurdles that they previously did and some of these things are good but the consequence I think is that they feel uh, beholden to uh, their stockholders more than their customers and you see that surface when you get an iPhone 6 that bends when it's put in somebody's pocket. Because they try to make it too thin. Because they, they, and the, the desire materials. is to manufacture it in such a way that the cost of manufacturing is less. Sure. And they have something very marketable. And people don't understand megapixels and right. uh, how much RAM is in a phone. But mm. if you tell them this is the thinnest phone that yes. you've ever seen, yeah, yeah, yeah. that sells. Yeah. Because people are not technically inclined to learn all of those other details. I used to work with a company that fed raw materials to Gorilla Glass. So like the thinner the glass, we would make stronger glass, like the technology that would make actually stronger, you know, 
panes of glass, mm -hmm. but because they put them in thinner phones, they cut them thinner and thinner and thinner. So like, yeah, here's a piece of glass that's twice the strength, but now it's twice the thick or half the thickness. Sure. You basically have maybe even something that's weaker because you compromise and the it, integrity of the material. To a degree, I appreciate that. I mean, I, I worked uh, for AT and T, Singular mm -hmm. Wireless before that. I worked at the Apple Store, and you know, I understand that the a product now versus a product ten years ago, there's an aesthetic and a feel to it. It's nice. Okay. Um, where I draw uh, issue is it's more difficult to repair. Mm -hmm. Everything is soldered and sealed. When they did make the uh, decision to seal it, um, they had this absurd statement that we did it because we're courageous and mm -hmm. we got rid of this headphone jack because we're courageous. And really, what they wanted to do. My bad. <laughs> Really what they wanted to do was make them cheaper to manufacture. So can I just catch up real quick? Sure. Um, it sounds like you're in the upper 90s, but Steve Jobs being better as a business manager as than a, Tim Cook? As an overall CEO. As an overall CEO. And I, uh, I think that was evidence Which I believe is like a tenure. kind of a manager of some sort, right? Like he, you're well, managing he, the he business. He founded the company. Yeah. And then he got worked out of the company when uh, Pepsi's CEO, John Scully, came in. Okay. And um, then because he went and did great things with Pixar. And but we would agree that Steve Jobs wouldn't be able to manage the company anymore since he's passed away now. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so it's just a question of like who's doing a better job, right? I don't know. You know, sometimes a dead CEO that does nothing is better than a live <laughs> CEO <laughs> that screws it up. So it's interesting. You <laughs> own stock in Apple, right? I do. Their stocks have gone up like for the last... Oh, yeah, I've doubled my money in four years. So um, anything And that Tim I'm Cook has been managing the company for a pretty long while, right? Sure, and if you were only concerned uh, Would with you mind if asked investment performance, then yeah. he's doing a great job. Would you mind if I ask a quick question? Sure. If he made his product lines repairable, but it came at a deficit of stock value, would you prefer that? I don't think it's as simple as that. But would you? But on that criteria that you would give. Sure. I mean, like, so as as somebody who carries an iPhone, who has learned video editing and done a bunch of work on a Mac over the years, would I mind seeing a, a understandable hit to my stock prices to yeah. see uh, the long term benefit of them manufacturing their products to the quality that they were known for in the mid two thousands? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Because I think that the payoff is it's a longer game. If you're beholden to the stockholder, then the decisions that you make are quarterly. Okay. You want to uh, control supply chain. You want to reduce the cost of production. You want to reduce the cost of labor. But you're just so I can catch up. All that. Just so I can catch up. Yeah. But does it sound like it doesn't sound like whether it's repairable or not repairable is that big of a deal then? Because if it's repairable and you'd still be in the upper 90s, or if it's not repairable and you'd still be in the upper 90s, it doesn't it would, seem like that's it would the basis here. Okay. But I, I, so what's the real foundation of like why you think Steve Jobs? So repairability. Than Tim Cook? Repairability is um, it's important. I think to any consumer who owns electronics because then um, if Apple owns the, you know, the supplies for the, the parts and Apple controls whether or not you're allowed to repair your device then you're locked into their ecosystem. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that, that comes with additional cost which again additional cost is better for stockholders yeah. versus for yeah. consumers. Yeah. I'm both and okay. so I'm concerned with a fair split. It sounds like you have like this there's like separate interests of like I respect Tim Cook as the business choices he's making, but the product he's making is like lower quality. I would, but to. maybe the more comprehensive complaint is also the quality of engineering has suffered. Mm. So one example there would be the new MacBook Pro lineup. Okay. They uh, chose to use a new type of keyboard with a, a butterfly type switch, mm -hmm. which has very low travel and allows for them to regain some millimeters of depth within the MacBook while still allowing for the logic board, the battery, and the other components to be within. Sure. Uh, do you want me to pause for a second? No, no, no. This one, I mean, okay. this camera is good enough. I can clean up the audio. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the engineering decision was made to use this different keyboard and to rivet it into place. Mm. Uh, simultaneously, in a product that they consider to be a pro product, they have a headphone jack which used to have um, optical audio hmm. within it. They removed the optical audio. They removed the, uh, the I.O. on it so they don't have a SD port anymore. They had a very popular and well-received charging solution, hmm. a MagSafe adapter. They scrubbed that in favor of a USB-C port, exclusive USB-C port. So they don't have the USB Type A or B connections any hmm. longer. Uh, and so for something that is, is marketed towards and, and supposedly designed and engineered for a professional, you now have to go and buy a bunch of adapters to be able to use all of these. To kind of throw something at you, if Tim Cook actually walked back on that and put in the engineering protocols that you prefer, would that make you rank him higher than Steve Jobs? Uh, higher than Steve Jobs? Yes. 
Well, I would have to see it a uh, longer track record. Steve Jobs had. If he did it there. over a longer track record, then uh, over a long period of time, um, I, I I don't know how it would compare them, right? So mm. like, how would you in, in do the you theoretical? Have do I think that he has the potential to ever surpass the founder of the company? Yeah. No, because I think the founder has a vision for creation, where the current CEO has a vision for uh, sustainability. So, regardless of whatever Tim Cook does from here on out, is never going to be better than Steve Jobs. Do you think that's reasonable? I think he could. I think he could take it in an excellent direction, and I think you could see him as great in his own right. Mm -hmm. um, I I don't think that he'll ever be able to attain that legacy. And Are you saying then you don't have a criteria to know what it looks like if you were wrong? Well, so in the highly subjective opinion of it's better. Yeah, right? like what we started off on a fun opinion, right? Vanilla. Yeah. Um, but uh, do you have a criteria to know what it would look like if you were wrong? I would have to see a degree of innovation where he takes the company into a realm to rank one over the other. Sure. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. Cool. So we have a guy who Let's set it up. created computers and yeah. then had a vision for an app store in the 1980s before yeah. there was even online yeah. distribution. Amazing. Um, and and so you see uh, through historical documentation and then the actual company's performance uh, a vision that is cast that's very ambitious that comes to fruition. Right. Um, how could Tim Cook do that now? Well, maybe automation and the whole car thing. That, maybe, yeah. that could be his legacy. Sure, sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And and I could see that being something that has such a, a net positive for society and such an incredible impact that if he were the thought leader on that, he were the driving force behind it. Fun driving. Um, he would uh, he would probably, in his own right, I think, surpass Steve Jobs in certain capacities. Okay. Cool. And, and, I, and I would be cool with that. But what I see is a guy who... And I never said you were absolute. Sure. You sure, were definitely sure. not absolute when you came in. Um, but it sounded like the criteria that you had was a bit more nebulous compared to like where we're at right yeah, now. Yeah, and I, I think that's valid. Um, okay. But uh, I Oh, and I forgot to set the timer. That's okay. But um, I'm pretty sure we're at... I think like, we're over uh, five. But I think... Can I <laughs> mind if I summarize the top? Sir. Sure. So sure. like you thought um, Tim Cook was doing an inferior job compared to Steve Jobs with regards to the the integrity of the uh, quality of the products he was making out. The engineering controls didn't seem to be as good compared to Steve Jobs. The vision, the innovation didn't seem to be on par. But before, I think it seemed like we didn't really have the basis for what it would take for you to say one was higher because one, it's subjective, yeah, absolutely. But if we could establish criteria for what it would take for you to be comfortable with saying one's higher than the other, it seemed like we didn't have that before. Okay. Maybe now we have something closer to that? Sure. Yeah. I enjoyed, appreciated the stuff. Great. Thank you, man. Paul, we could talk with you. Then. You too. <laughs> cool. <laughs> That's about it. It does. Awesome. It draws passion out of you, doesn't it? <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> How'd you feel? How would you say you felt? Or you feel Probably like? my only complaint would be five minutes seems very short because I could go into a laundry list where I could talk for a five minute monologue on all the individual design choices that have led to me feeling this way because I would be willing to excuse one or two really bad design choices. Sure. But if you look at, okay, well, let's look at every single product line in yeah. the last five years yeah. and every single one of them has suffered similarly.